Hi, welcome to the Windows 7 RC Virtual PC Installation Instructions by Bean. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to run Windows 7 Release Candidate that was just released today uh, to the public and will be able to be used until June of next year. Now I'm going to show you how to put this on your computer without having to overwrite your current uh, operating system, meaning if you're running Windows XP or if you're running Windows Vista, you will be able to run Windows 7 within a virtual environment to test it out without even leaving your Windows XP or Windows Vista. So it just plays right there on the screen for you. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get started here. The things you're going to need are 10 gigabytes of partition space on your hard drive. You need at least a gigahertz processor and a gigabyte of RAM. Uh, you're also going to need the Microsoft Virtual PC software, which is free and is an official Microsoft product, as well as download a uh, uh, Windows 7 RC1, which is public. So I'm going to show you. We're going to grab Virtual PC first. So we're going to go to uh, the website, and here you have Virtual PC 2007. It's a full free version, so we're just going to click Download, and we're going to grab the 32-bit edition. So you just click Download here give it a second and I'm not going to download it because I already have it but uh, you of course will download it. It's about 30 megabytes so it shouldn't take too long if you have a, a fast internet connection. Next we're going to need to download uh, Windows 7 RC. Um, so I will provide the link. You, uh, It'll be on this page where the video is playing So uh, and it'll be bundled with, with everything so no fret. Anyway, you scroll down to the very bottom, you're going to select your download version, and then click go. And it's going to take you to a page where it, it may log me in, nope, okay. So I need to log in, and I'm using my um, MSN Messenger login. And now what it's going to do is it's going to give me a unique, brand new Windows 7 product key. Now you don't need to take this one that just popped up as you're going to be given your own and um, that will work for you. So this one you don't need to grab. So don't freak out about that. Next you're going to click download now and it wants to use an ActiveX Java applet uh, to, to download Windows RC 7 uh, which is really irritating um, and I think I have figured out a way around that by giving a direct link which I will try putting on my website but for now I recommend you guys just try going with this uh, download manager and let me drag it down here so you can see it but essentially it starts a Java applet and on mine it's not popping up for security but uh, the very first time I visited this page I had to click at the top of the screen and say yes I want to install this yes I want to use this yada 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 so this is the kind of stuff that you'll have to do as well and once you get through all that you're going to be taken to the download manager which is uh, still loading so I'm going to pause this until it's done okay so now what happened is it's popping up and it's asking me where I want to save the ISO file so I'm going to choose my desktop just because it's much easier now I already have it saved so I'm not going to do it but just to start it I'll, I'll show you what it looks like to start so now it goes through here and it's got its own little built-in uh, progress indicator and you can pause the download and resume it and all that fun stuff. So go ahead and grab that and let that one in the background while we're doing we're setting up the virtual PC. You will also notice that on the desktop it created a start download manager icon and if for any reason you uh, lose your download manager for Windows 7 you can double click that and it brings it back and you can get started on it again but I'm gonna be removing them since I don't need them okay now what we need to do is we need to create a partition that Windows 7 is going to run off of okay now I am running Windows Vista which makes it really easy to create a partition so I'm gonna click the start button and here under computer I'm gonna right click on that and choose manage and it's going to come up with this and on the left hand side you're going to want to choose disk management and this shows my C drive and my D drive and I'm actually going to expand that out a little bit but it shows if you, if you look carefully here 
it shows that my C drive has 54 gigabytes and my D drive has 126 gigabytes of available space. Um, now that's plenty, obviously, but um, I want you people to realize that if you, d what we're going to do is we're going to tear off a chunk of the empty space of your hard drive, and that will uh, give us a, an area for us to run Windows 7. So it, it, by tearing off a chunk of empty space from your hard drive, it will not affect any of the files that are on there. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to use my D drive, most people don't have a secondary drive, so um, you're going to do the same thing on your C drive as I'm about to do with my D drive. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on here, and I'm going to choose shrink volume, because we want to shrink the size of the, uh, the drive, and I want to tear off a 10 gigabyte chunk, which 10,240 megabytes is a 10 gigabyte chunk. So now I'm going to click shrink. And once that's done, you're going to notice that we now have a 10 gigabyte unallocated file, uh, which is the 10 gigabyte uh, hard drive. Well, I'm sorry, 10 gigabyte partition. And this has um, been torn off from my D drive. Uh, it's just empty space, so all the files I have on my D drive, they're still there. Um, and they've been untouched. So the next thing we want to do with this uh, unallocated file size is make it so that we can write to it. So we're going to right click there and we're going to choose new simple volume and it's going to this brings up a wizard. First thing we do is click next. Now it wants to know how big of a, of a volume we have here and it automatically populates it. So it should say 10,240. It um, Click next. Now I'm going to assign it a drive letter of Z just because it's a unique, completely different drive that I won't confuse with any other drive. Um, that's just my personal preference. Then we click Next. We want to make sure the file system is NTFS. The allocation unit size is default. And the volume label I'm changing to Windows 7 uh, just so that I know for sure. Um, it just makes it easier to identify. And I'm also going to choose a perform a quick format because the standard format takes forever. And once, uh, once you're ready for that, you're going to go ahead and click um, on Next. Here it wants you to confirm everything that we're doing. So um, we're just going to go ahead and click Finish. Now it's going to go through and it's going to format that 10 gigabytes, which is not going to affect any of the files. <coughs> now it pops up and says, hey, here's an empty uh, Z drive. So that's you can go ahead and close that. But here we have a 10 gigabyte healthy partition that we can put Windows 7 on. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and close the computer manager screen. And the next thing we're going to do is run Microsoft Virtual PC. Now the first thing you need to know about that is it doesn't create an icon on the desktop. So you have to go to the Start menu, and we have to go to All Programs. And it's going to be out on the main page, probably near the top. Um, I found mine next to Internet Explorer, which is right here at the top. Um, and I went ahead and I right clicked and dragged and I created an icon onto the desktop. Um, I've already got one which I will actually uh, drag right here. That's just for ease of use since we're going to be using the program often. So um, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to run it. So I'm going to double click on virtual PC and it's going to load the software. Now the first thing it's going to do is it's going to bring up a wizard. Now with the wizard we're going to click uh, on Next. We want to create a virtual machine. And I'm going to create um, one called Windows 7. And then I'm going to browse because I want to make sure that that Windows 7 gets saved onto the Z drive, which is the partition we created. So I'm going to click on Computer over here on the left. And I'm going to go into the Windows 7, which is the Z drive. Double click. And then I'm going to click on Save. And that populates the information here. And I'm going to click Next. Now here we're going to choose the operating system that we're planning on installing. Windows 7 is too new, it's not going to be on this thing. So we're going to choose Windows Vista, which is compatible. So now we're going to click Next. Now it wants to know uh, how much RAM we want to use. I'm not going to use the recommended RAM, which is 512. I'm going to adjust mine up to 1024, which is a gigabyte of RAM. Um, for those of you that only have a gigabyte of RAM, you might want to use 512. 
Uh, now we want to choose a new virtual hard disk because that's what we're using. Is we're going to put Windows 7 on our virtual hard disk, which we are ready to do. So now we click Next, and it wants to make sure where we want to put it. And the hard disk size we do need to change to 10, 24, 0. And that just says we want to be able to use the whole 10 gigabytes. And now we're going to click Next and Finish. So here we have Windows 7 and it says it's not running. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and click Start. So select it and then choose Start. And it's